Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Mahmood and I am the Senior Occupational Therapist at the Down Syndrome Resource Foundation. And my name is Arianna Coles and I'm one of the other occupational therapists at the Down Syndrome Resource Foundation. And welcome to our OT video. We wanted to take the time to talk a little bit about sensory processing, but one specific um, sense that is getting a lot more research and a lot more um, notice in our field. So let's kind of dive in to the world of interoception. So interoception is also known as the eighth sense or known as the hidden sense. As occupational therapists, Ariana and I will work on sensory processing challenges with our clients. And it is something that is a lot of people know about, but there's definitely lots of different pieces of the sensory processing system that a lot of people may not know about. So this is why we're here. So let's kind of talk a little bit about what sensory processing is. Um, it's defined as the ability to take in, organize, and make sense of the sensory information received by the brain from our sensory systems, and then respond appropriately. Research has shown that approximately 49% of individuals with Down syndrome experience sensory processing challenges compared to approximately five to 16% of the general population. So we know that our individuals with Down syndrome have significant differences um, in how they process sensory information and how they respond to it. So Ariana, do you wanna tell us a little bit about all the sensory systems? Yeah, definitely. So um, as Hannah was mentioning earlier, earlier, you guys are probably aware of the five, uh, five common senses that are pretty well known. So these include visual, which is your sight, auditory, sound, tactile, sense of touch, gustatory, your taste, and olfactory, which is smell. And then there's three other senses that are probably a little bit lesser known. Uh, so the first is proprioceptive or your sense of body awareness. And this sense basically tells us where our bodies are in space and how your muscles and your joints are moving. Uh, the next one is vestibular or your sense of movement. And this system is actually situated in your inner ear and it helps us to keep our balance and our posture and understand how and where and how fast our bodies are moving. And then the last one, which is our main focus for today, is interoception, or your sense of what's going on inside of your body. So it um, tells us basically, you know, what's going on inside um, your internal state, what's happening with your internal organs. So just as there are receptors in your muscles and joints, there are also receptors inside your organs, and that includes your skin as well. So those receptors send information about the inside of your body to your brain. And this helps us to regulate our vital functions. And these include things like body temperature, hunger, thirst, digestion, and your heart rate. Absolutely. So, so um, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges um, that we might experience with, or not we, but like our individuals with Down syndrome would experience um, if they have interoceptive challenges. Yeah, so um, one of the first challenges that we often see is, um, kids who struggle with interoceptive input often have difficulty with their temperature regulation. So they might not realize, for example, if it's really cold outside that they might need a coat because they just can't really sense that they feel that cold. Or even the slightest temperature change can cause negative behaviors and physical responses. So it can be from one, of, one end of the spectrum where you're undersensitive to hypersensitivity in that area. Um, so that's one area where there can be difficulty. Um, hunger and thirst is another big one. Um, so a lot of our kiddos, they might have difficulty recognizing when they're hungry or thirsty and, you know, figuring out when they're actually full and they don't need to keep eating. So that can be another uh, difficult uh, thing to sense um, for our kiddos, for sure. Yeah. And Ariana and I have had multiple conversations with so many parents um, about helping their kiddos understand when they're full because um, a lot of them will sometimes keep eating because they don't get that signal back right Ariana like that your stomach is full so kind of helping them become more aware of of that um, of that feeling because it can it can be a health issue as well so we have to be careful with with that area um, yeah and 
let's talk a little bit about pain perception. So, you know, if our kiddos who have interoceptive challenges may not accurately gauge pain. So whether they may have a high pain tolerance, which is quite common in Down syndrome, um, or in some cases may have a very low pain tolerance. This can be a challenge because they may not be able to identify and even process things like, you know, stomach aches, headaches, nausea, all those internal sensations that can be um, a bit more nuanced. And of course, if there are communication challenges, then relaying that information to a loved one or a caregiver can be really difficult for them. So pain perception is an area that we can um, also help with becoming more aware of their interoceptive state. And then of course the big one, and there's a double star there for a reason, toileting, um, the area of toileting and interoceptive go hand in hand. It's very, very important to understand the interoceptive sense so that you can understand why your kiddos are having difficulty with toilet training. Difficulty with understanding if your bowel or bladder is full. That is where the issue lies. So because their interoceptive system is weakened, um, our individuals with Down syndrome may have a really hard time detecting when their bowel is full or their bladder is full. So for example, you and I, as you're listening to this presentation, you know, you might have a, a little bit of an awareness like, oh, I kind of have to go pee, but I'll just wait till this video is finished. So you're able to detect you know, that at, even at a smaller level that you kind of have to pee, but you're able to, you know, delay it enough to finish this presentation and then go pee. We're hoping. If you need to go pee, definitely pause and go. But for our individuals with Down syndrome, you know, delaying that process can be a bit hard. And for them, they may not sense that their bladder is full until it's reached capacity, almost to the point where maybe they might be in risk of having an accident. And this is why Accidents are quite common with our individuals when they're toilet training. So when you're thinking about toilet training, keep this interoceptive piece in mind because it is really important. It's also super crucial when we're training our kiddos to self-initiate. So they have to be able to recognize how their body is feeling on the inside. They have to be able to recognize, oh, I kind of have to go pee. I'm feeling it, I'm sensing it, I'm processing it. Oh, okay, now I'm going to initiate and take myself to the bathroom. So it is a quite of a complex process and it is difficult to teach, but it is not impossible. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how we can do that later on, but I just want you to keep this piece in mind um, when you are toilet training your kids. So Ariana, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you and I as OTs do to kind of help raise interoceptive awareness. Um, one of our favorites is yoga. I'm sure you would agree. Yes, definitely. That's one yeah. of the the favorite activities, especially starting in January, New Year. Absolutely. New kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And <laughs> the reason why we love yoga so much is because it is really an, an exercise in focusing on listening to your body. That is a core component. Controlling your breath, paying attention to how your body moves. So a lot of our students of all ages love doing yoga. Um, so it's a great thing to put into practice every day. Mindfulness practices have actually been shown to be one of the most effective and evidence-based interventions for improving interoceptive awareness. So, you know, being in the present moment, giving ourselves and our kiddos the time to really focus on their internal body and emotional state. Ariana and I and our colleagues at the DSRF are big proponents of deep breathing and, you know, and just sitting and thinking about how we're feeling especially when maybe they're at an over aroused state and bringing it down to like, you know, let's ground ourselves, let's be mindful. Um, and, you know, mindfulness has lots of wonderful benefits, um, including the, you know, increased awareness of our body sensations. But just keep in mind that it can be a very abstract concept for some of our students um, and can be difficult to understand. So our job as OTs and therapists is to modify that abstract mindfulness concept into maybe something that's a bit more concrete um, and visual because we know that our students are strong visual learners and even interactive. So even using visuals of a deep breathing, you know, like breathing in looks like smelling a flower, breathing out looks like blowing out a candle. So creating something more concrete that they can grasp onto can be very um, helpful in this um, exercise of teaching interoceptive awareness. And then emotion matching is also a really great way 
Um, understanding and labeling emotions is just a great skill for our individuals to have overall, because emotions can also be a, an abstract concept. So, you know, whether it's having your kids looking through a magazine or printing out a variety of pictures of different emotions, talking about those emotions, labeling them as happy, sad, angry, surprised, you know, really making it a part um, of your everyday language and everyday interactions um, can be super helpful. And then even kind of talking about emotions and relating it to those physiological processes. So if you know if your kiddos and we know a lot of our kids with down syndrome have constipation as a challenge so like oh like my tummy hurts oh that feels like you know so showing the expression like oh that hurts that's you know i don't feel happy when my tummy hurts um or oh it's cold like oh my mouth looks like this you know you're just giving them that concrete visual to associate with that bodily function or that physiological reaction that can be super helpful with increasing interoceptive awareness and so as Hannah was mentioning earlier, um, breathing exercises are another great way to work on developing that interoceptive sense. So um, again, just encouraging deep breaths in and out. Um, they can be quite calming. And this in turn can help our kiddos to really pay attention to not only the task at hand, but what's going on inside their body. And um, yeah, really be able to attend to and kind of identify those different feelings that are going on internally. Um, so another um, activity that uh, is a helpful one to work on is temperature. So um, as we were chatting about before, you can use um, hot and cold activities and working on this in your day-to-day -day life can really help your child learn how to identify uh, the difference between these temperatures. So for example, if your child wakes up in the morning, you'd be like, oh, let's look outside. What's the weather like today? Oh, it's cold. So what do we need to wear when it's cold? And then gradually help teach your child, okay, when it's cold, I need to wear something that's warm, that's going to keep me warm. This is what warm feels like. This is what cold feels like. And you can also use things like social stories to help um, them learn when it's appropriate to wear um, particular items of clothing. So that can be another great way to work on uh, interoception. And then the last one that we are going to mention today is alerting activities. So these activities are um, basically to help your child to learn what it feels like, for example, when you're more in a heightened state. So um, this can be a great way to involve exercise into your child's daily routine as well. So doing something fun, like doing a dance or doing some yoga, like we mentioned earlier, and then really taking the time to chat with your child and identify how they're feeling afterwards. Oh, my heart is beating really fast. How about yours? Oh, yours is beating really fast too. So helping them to identify those different things that they're feeling including how do your muscles feel? Oh, do you feel tired? I feel tired. Yeah. And are you breathing hard? Are you breathing fast? Or are you breathing slow and steady? And this can be another great way to help them identify those internal body states. Yeah. And is there anything else you wanted to mention here, Hina? No, I think that's a great idea. And I love that you uh, reiterated the fact that, you know, have a conversation with your kids or somehow interact with them and have them, you know, really internally be mindful and understand how their bodies are feeling. And the heart rate one is really great because it can trigger anxiety. Like, you know, if, if your student or kiddo was feeling anxious, they can say, oh, you know, like my heart's going really fast. I'm excited or anxious. It could be a multitude of emotions that increase your heart rate. So yeah, so I love that in that one activity, we're doing mindfulness, labeling emotions, getting some exercise. So yeah, those are great suggestions. Absolutely. Great. So we want to thank you for taking the time today to tune in and uh, watch our video. And for more information, you can feel free to contact us at the emails listed here and visit our website at www.dsrf.org. And if you have any ideas for any OT specific videos that you'd like us to do in the future, please leave a comment or email us. Um, we're hoping to do a few more of these throughout. Um, and yeah, have a wonderful day. And thanks so much for tuning in.